Yes, hi, uh, this is Dr. Khan. So I've done what is a residual capsule removal. This is a very interesting patient. Uh, she had her first set of implants. You can come in and have a look. 2004, 425 cc implant done through the nipple areola complex. And then in 2007, she opted for a 700 cc implant that she got. In 2013, she had the right one of the 700 cc's ruptured. Then a year later, she was without any implants, and then she went in in 2014, got the 695 cc Sientra silicone implant. And then she got very sick. In 2017, she explanted. And we, she was told by her surgeon that 80% of the capsule was removed, 20% left behind. So she came to me with pretty much all the boxes on that breast implant illness questionnaire checked off only 41 year old lady and you can see look she's gone through one two three four five now this is her sixth surgery uh 41 years of age no cancer and so this is all cosmetic and now she has a history of right rupture so i went in and removed what is the capsule that was superior it was very tricky and as you can see right here this is the capsule um, that was clearly left behind you can see the the layer of capsule around and so I removed all of that inflamed tissue that's around as you can see look this is part of the capsule this is superior uh, an attempt was made for it to be removed this is the residual capsule inferior and you can see right here all of this scar tissue was removed along with the inflamed tissue and we'll see number one so clearly right on top of the rib uh, inferior below the pectoralis was this tissue and I removed the uh, the scar that she had now I'm gonna go ahead and change my gloves uh, so this is the residual capsule. This is what was making her sick, as you know from the many, many patients that we have done. And if you will focus over here, I want to show what is this mass. Again, new gloves here. Look at this tissue right here. As I go in, look at this tissue right here. See, this is your, this is your ruptured silicone. You see that? The gum sign right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and you will see better. See that, this is your silicone that's there. Uh, since 2013, uh, at least uh, 10 years, this is the uh, ruptured silicone. So I'm gonna send this off along with this tissue. And there's certainly what appears to be uh, silicone right here. Look at this. So uh, I'm gonna send this as a right chest mass. Now this is the residual capsule superior. Uh, look at how thick this is. This is the capsular contracture that she had. Um, it's a very thick, a superior aspect. And then residual capsule inferior. A lot of this inflamed tissue removed. And you can clearly see uh, there is uh, this pocket of tissue where the implant was sitting right inside. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can open this up. So this is where they had, she had the rupture on the right side. So as you can see right here, a lot of inflammation, a lot of uh, tissue that you can see right here that she has uh, right on top of the rib. So, so if I avert this So a lot of inflamed tissue is hard and, and does not look healthy. I'm gonna go ahead and send this with this one. So the, the take home message is, the removal of an implant is one task. It's all about the castle and implant. Ideally in 2013 when she had the ruptured right implant, this should have been done and box. So none of the silicone should have been left behind. None of it should have spilled into the chest and uh, she should ideally not have had implants. She's had had a lot of reaction to the breast implant illness uh, type symptoms from the silicon toxicity, silicon granulomas, as you can see that uh, grossly visualized. We'll see what the pathologist says. That's the second and then ultimately number three, we will see how the patient herself feels. She is only 41 and we'll see how she recovers. I remove all the inflamed tissue as you see and she will hopefully bounce back to a normal state of good health and we'll hear from the patient. So there's two tasks to the whole uh, challenge of doing an explant. Number one, the surgeon has to 100% believe 
that the entire implant and capsule must be removed as one system, preferably in the end block fashion or 100% total capsulectomy. And the surgeon must firmly believe that the patient's good health and bounce back to a normal state of good health is dependent on the surgeon doing the right job. So that's the first thing that the, pers the, doc the surgeon must believe that breast implant illness exists and he should be doing the proper end block or total capsulectomy. And the second task is that the surgeon should be able to perform and carry out that total capsulectomy in the end block fashion or 100% total capsulectomy and the surgeon is capable of doing it because it is not for everyone. Um, and so there you have it. Uh, this is Dr. Khan, Executive Plastic Surgery.